I've been looking for the right compression pedal to pair with my Rickenbacker 360 12 string. Recently, I did a project where I ripped all the electronics out of my 2001 Rickenbacker 360 12 and put it back to 1963 specs. Now, I was really going for that hard day's night help era of the Beatles tone, and the modern Rickenbackers just had nothing in common with that, honestly. Uh, everything from the wiring to the pickups they were using. So I had Gemini pickups, wind me some period correct toaster pickups. I put some correct caps in there and the correct value of pots in there. And it sounds pretty dynamite. It's uh, incredibly close to that original tone. But this also made me think about wanting to dig a little bit deeper and some more of those birds, and Roger McGuinn style tones and Tom Petty tones. And this led me a little bit more to searching out a great compression pedal to pair with it because Although the Beatles stuff is compressed, the Birds and uh, Petty stuff seems to be a little heavier compressed, and in particular with the Birds stuff, some of it's before the amplifier. Some of the Rickenbacker guitars had a compression circuit built right into them. More on that another time, but finding the right compression pedal turns out to be a little bit of a challenge because a lot of compression pedals will sort of cut off your high end, so you get that nice squeezed tone, but you lose the attack and you lose a little bit of that chime. Uh, Analog Man thought of a great way around this. You know, he makes this pedal called the Compressor Pedal, which is his remake of the Ross Compression Pedal, which is a highly sought after, uh, rare, and expensive compression pedal, which also the original tends to be a little bit noisy. So he, he makes this pedal and upgrades it so it's a little less noisy with that original Ross character. But he also added a few other optional features, one of them being an attack knob, so I can choose how much attack of the signal comes through before the compression grabs it. Now this is sort of an important element for playing, I think, 12 string or anything that you really need a little bit more uh, attack or you need that transient to come through on, but you still want to squish the signal a little bit. Not all compression pedals have this, so when I'm using this compressor pedal, I am actually keeping the attack uh, all the way up, so I'm letting as much of the transient through as the pedal will allow. But he didn't stop there. He actually added a switch, which you can see on the right side of the pedal, which allows you to adjust how much treble uh, will come through the pedal. And this is really an awesome feature. So the attack and this treble uh, feature really allows you to keep a lot of that chime. What I like about this is before I did the modifications to my Rickenbacker, it didn't feel like it paired well with different amps. I could plug it into a Vox AC15 or 30 and, and I'd have to really EQ it a lot to get it to sound like, like the Rickenbacker we know and it still wasn't quite there. Since I've swapped out the electronics and the guitar, it pairs so much better with the other amps now. I can pretty much plug it in to anything and even if I'm using it on a gig with other guitars and not have to, to do any EQ adjustments, so it actually sounds like that Rick sound immediately. To me, the bird sound is a little bit more of an American amp vibe, so uh, as opposed to the Beatles using their Rickenbackers with Vox amps, I feel like the birds thing is a little bit more of plugged into some blackface Fender amps. For these examples, I'm gonna use a Headstrong Little King Reverb, which is a blackface Princeton remake uh, Wayne at Headstrong really meticulously recreated these the era of Princeton amps. Mine has a 12-inch speaker in it as opposed to a 10, just because I prefer 12s a little bit more. Uh, now, normally before I had the wiring redone on my Rickenbacker, I found this to be a hard pairing, not because there was anything wrong with the Headstrong, because every great guitar I have pairs well with it, but due to the electronics in the Rickenbacker, they just didn't didn't match up with, I thought, the way that the original Rickenbacker sounded. So once I swapped that out, it was just such a massive improvement. I was still missing that I was still missing that squish though, and uh, and I tried a couple different pedals with it, the um, Origin Slide Rig and the Keeley Two Knob Compressor, and uh, and where I felt those other two compressors work really well in different circumstances, uh, the Slide Rig uh, with the treble roll off really works well with slide guitar. It was designed for that, so that makes sense. But when I was using the Rickenbacker, it was just a little too um, dull. 
right, and muted sounding. And, uh, and when I got this compressor, immediately plugging it into even like the black face circuit, which you hear me using, it just came to life. And it seems to have that American sort of early birds Rickenbacker sound uh, with the squish, with the attack, with the treble that isn't being cut off. So in these examples, you'll go through, you'll hear me using a lot of the bridge pickup. Some of the examples, which I'll note, I have a special cap put into my Rickenbacker, which was in George Harrison's 1963 Rick, which basically cuts out the low end. So it's a bit of a, a high pass filter is the best way to think of it. Uh, and this is really what you hear on If I Needed Someone and, and uh, A Hard Day's Night and some of those songs. It just really cuts out that low end. But what I had Matt uh, do at 30th Street when he installed that cap was he put a push-pull pot so I could leave that cap in or take it out because I feel like the bird stuff isn't quite as um, as uh, high-passed. I'll note in these examples when I'm using essentially that high-pass cap or when I'm not uh, with the compressor so you can hear the differences. I think that this is an extremely musical uh, compressor. It's in turning out to be one of my favorite compressors. It pairs really well with acoustic guitars. I used it on a gig the other night, and I just use uh, a minimal amount of compression. For me personally, like the, the sweet spot for a compressor is just about where you start hearing it. I don't often heavily squish things. With this pedal, you can squish it hard, and it sounds fantastic. It doesn't lose its definition, I think, where, uh, say, the Keeley 2 knob uh, sort of starts to lose its definition because of the high-end roll-off. I can push this compressor harder than I would any other one. The compressor is one of those pedals that when it's in your signal chain, everything just sounds better. So it's a little hard to turn it off once it's on. And sometimes I've been even using it as a preamp. So I set the compression level super low and just set the output so it's just slightly above unity gain. And that way it just creates a little bit more life going to the amp and just opens it up a little bit. You're hardly hearing the compression. Something about the circuit in it just is really flattering with, um, with honestly, most amps I've used it with. I've used it with tweeds. I've used it with um, British amps, AC-15s, AC-30s. I've used it with blackface um, American amps. I've used it with uh, Fender brownface amps. Uh, so throughout all those different circuits, you know, it's pairing well, where sometimes there's other compressors that I've used with different amps and I have favorites. You know, I'm gonna use this compressor with this amp because it works well or things like that. Uh, but this one really seems to be pretty universal. If you're a really big fan of, of Beatles and the Birds and Tom Petty, this pedal is gonna really pair well with any of your Rickenbacker guitars. Mm -hmm. 